Let's take a look at the uh, start list. Cowley and Gibbons representing Australia. What a championship they've had. Evan Dunphy on his day. He can be uh, a medalist, the Canadian. The Chinese are always strong. The Colombians strong as well. Of course, Grace Walking's particularly strong in the Hispanic world. Look out for a big walk from the Ecuadorians. They had an amazing time in uh, the Race Walking Team Championships in Oman back in March. The Italians with Massimo Stano, they're expected to be very strong indeed. Stano amongst the favorites here. He is the uh, Tokyo 20 kilometers champion from last year. The Mexicans, well, what a tradition they have. Dr. Ortiz and Palma Olivares, their uh, trio. Peru, they have uh, had some inspiration for medals already at these championships. Krasowski of Poland and Tomala representing a nation that is uh, very appreciative of the art of race walking. <laughs> Off they go then. 35 laps of this circuit and straight away like a rocket out of the blocks, like a rabbit out of the blocks. One of the uh, Japanese tears to the front. Look at that lead. They've been running about 15, walking about 15 seconds. And uh, that is a remarkable gap. It is Matsunaga of uh, Japan, seventh in uh, the Rio Games back in 2016 at 20K. And uh, he is making very clear that his intention is to get out and get away from the others and maybe get a gap that sees them fighting each other. And uh, he leading them out. But, I have never seen anything like that in a distance running event, never mind about a, a walk event. We've got 53 seconds on the clock, and Matsunaga has got a lead that you'd normally expect quite a few minutes to build up. Yeah, Matsunaga's second in the world this year, uh, best of 2.27.09, uh, set in Wajima back in April. So he may feel that he's quicker than all the others, and this is his best chance of a medal. Of course, they will be buoyed up by seeing their teammates, Yamanishi and Ikeda, going a 1-2 in the 20K uh, uh, eight, nine days ago. Uh, so, Matsunaga making a very bold start. This is actually what his teammate Suzuki did in the Doha 50K three years ago. Yusuke Suzuki uh, won gold. Uh, he sadly is not here today. Obviously, the Japanese have figured that a very fast pace is the way to win a race like this. He's not the quickest of the Japanese here. Masatoda Kawano, we just caught a glimpse of a few moments ago, 2.26.40 for him. And the Japanese men's race walking really is their top event at the moment. Of course, they did, they did win a, an excellent bronze in the women's javelin, Kitaguchi. So there is Miguel Han Angel Lopez, 34 years old, very strong team from Spain. And the two Germans there, Jung Hans. Now, the German team has, has been a bit decimated by COVID, sadly. Uh, Jung Hans was supposed to race the 20K, had to withdraw, but he has since replaced uh, Jonathan Hilbert, the silver medalist from Sapporo last year, uh, who sadly is missing today's race through COVID. And also Linker, their teammate, is a, is a non-starter today due to COVID. So two Germans left in the field. Well, less than three minutes on the clock, and there to extreme right of picture, you can see Matsu Naga on his merry way heading down towards the start-finish gantry, about 200 metres ahead of him. It's about 300 metres from this turn down to the start-finish gantry. And uh, he has built up a lead, I don't know, quite a few seconds already. I mean, we're still inside the first kilometre, but he has ripped off this opening circuit. Now then, Matsunaga is currently under, going inside 2.22 pace. The world record for the 35k, uh, world records will not be ratified until the 1st of January next year, since it's a new event. And for the men, they have to go faster than 2.22. Well, here is the uh, race leader. He's about to go through a 4k. 12.11 at 3k, there he goes, I make that about 16.14 give or take according to the clock bottom right of the screen, 16.15 the official time at 4k 
And let's just see. That means he's done a walked a 404 there. He's getting quicker. <laughs> I mean, I know the first kilometer was outrageously fast at 359, but he's gone 407, 405, 404. He is continuing to uh, keep the pressure on and try to get the gap to such a degree that the pack will stick together. They're working hard, but it would take a brave man now, Mara, to break away from that pack. They go through in, what, 1656. Let's see what comes up on our computer system, 1657. So boy, oh boy, that's 42 seconds. It was 37 plus 40, 42 seconds. He's opened up another five seconds. On yeah, the extraordinary. It's interesting, actually, that, you know, whether the 35K favours the 20K walkers or the 50K walkers or a bit of a mixture. You know, 50K, obviously, a massive endurance event. 20K is a bit of a sprint. Uh, we've seen Percy Carlstrom, the 20K specialist, doing very well at it. Uh, Brendan Boyce of Ireland, he's a 50k specialist. Uh, so Matsunaga perhaps feels, you know, th this this also can be a bit of a sprint. Campos, the Peruvian, uh, he's he there in the white hat, the Peruvian athlete. So I think he doesn't know that yet, but when he comes to the disqualification board the next time around, he will see that he has three red cards. And so he's on one for loss of contact and two for bent knee, Campos of Peru, one of the doublers from last week's 20K. We're only about 20% into the race and he's yep. got three red cards. It shows how this ripping apart of the field by Matsunaga has had an effect further back. Everybody's sort of having to walk Mara on the, on the red line. Yeah, that's right, yep. So sad news for Campos, he was 41st in the 20K, 26 years old. Uh, there are 13 athletes doubling up from the 20k last week and there is Karl Dolman of Germany, Ron Weigel, coach of the German team, multiple uh, medalist at global uh, championships. There is Campos who will uh, get the bad news very shortly, I don't know if he's aware, maybe he is because he'll have seen, he'll have seen those discs held out to him. But of course, when you're in a pack and a disc, the judge has to try and hold out a disc to one individual. It's very hard. And I'm sure that very often the athletes are not aware of uh, who the disc exactly has been held out to. There's Evan Dunphy, the Canadian. He's had some uh, big walks in his life, Dunphy. Seventh in Muscat back in March, the 31-year-old. Very experienced Dunphy. And in fact, uh, Dunphy taking a medal uh, last year. He is uh, a man who... At 50k, really knows his way around. Bronze medalist at the Olympic Games last year. In fact, he garnered that bronze in the last 100 metres. It was uh, a determined walk from the Canadian. What a night they had last night here in uh, Eugene in the Hayward Field Stadium. About half a mile from where we are right now, there are 4x100 men taking gold, defeating the very strong favourites, the USA, by about half a metre. Dunphy has to have been inspired by that. And it is uh, Matsunaga of Japan who has uh, poured on the pace. Daisuke Matsunaga, since the get-go, it was almost like he was fired from a catapult. When the gun had gone, he started his own watch, looked up, and bang, he was gone up the course like a greyhound. And over the first uh, three or four hundred metres, he'd opened up about 50 metres on the pack. It was utterly astonishing. We know he's very fast at the shorter distances. He's walked to... Uh, 37.58 for 10,000 on the track. Uh, that, I mentioned to you earlier, is uh, akin to Perseus Karlsson's 10,000 on the track, 37.57. So he is one of the fastest ever over 10,000 on the track. He was seventh in the Rio 20K. It was Daisuke Matsunaga. So six years back, was uh, not far off the medals in the, the Brazil Games, the Rio Games. Plenty of experience. And he's three times the Asian 20K champion, actually. He won it in 2016, 2017, and 2018. Moving up to this longer distance, it's only his third 35K. He's only done it a couple of times before, but he seems to be rather enjoying himself, Martha. He's gone through 12K now in 48-48. And that's a, a 4.04.
He's just gone through 14k. Now listen to this. In 56.59, his uh, split there, that last kilometre, a 4.09. That is his slowest kilometre. 14k reached and his slowest kilometre yet, 4.09. And you think he's had a couple of 3.59s. That is, uh, I don't want to say significant slowing. And I certainly don't want to be a doom monger or, I d or want him indeed to slow at all. But that is uh, very interesting. Let's see what the gap is. It's 57.57, uh, so it's down to 58 seconds. Down to 58 seconds. It was one minute and three seconds. The pack have closed five seconds on him in the last kilometer. Maybe, just maybe, little cracks beginning to appear. Let's wait and see. We'll, uh, we won't over forecast it. Let's see what happens over the next lap. 122.33 and the gap is down to seven seconds. Look at that, they are closing on him. It's, it's horrible to see in a way because he's worked so hard. You feel for the fella. He's walked remarkably well, but the writing is on the wall writ large. We are coming. You are going to be caught. You have probably misjudged it. Maybe we're wrong. I hope I'm wrong because it's been such a brave effort. But uh, 35k, well, it would have been a wonderful tactic if this had been a 20k race. But it's not. They're not so far past halfway. And he's now being reeled in. And uh, he would have set probably records for many nations and the intermediate points at 10k and 20k. But he's being reeled in now. And the seven second gap at uh, 20k. A little glance over his shoulder there is uh, not good news for him. And just looking at the size of this pack one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them in this pack working together. And you have to say, Mara, I cannot see how he can be decelerating this much and yet latch onto the back of the pack and live with them. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's what you've really got to do in this situation. Just use them to, to pull you along. Uh, this happened to me in one marathon. I caught up an early leader and I thought her race was over, but she just tagged onto the back of me and, and went on to win. Now then, the last 5K split for Matsunaga, I got at 21.23. The previous one, 20.32. So he has slowed significantly. And Matsunaga almost caught by this pack in this 21st kilometer it has been an astonishing display of power walking little glance over his shoulder there but this is the view from the chasing pack they've worked patiently they will probably have been getting told by coaches and team support on the sidelines bide your time bide your time he'll never be able to maintain this there's a lot of very knowledgeable walkers and coaches and support staff out there and it looks now as though that pace set by Daisuke Matsunaga for the first 20 kilometers was uh, self-destructive. There was no way he could maintain it. He has another long glance there from that uh, drone shot across at this walking group. I wonder if he's going to try and slot in amongst them. It's almost like he's looking to try and jump in like jumping on inside the door of a moving train and he slots in behind his teammate Kawano but how long will he be able to live with them because he'll have to up his game he's been moving a lot slower than them for each of the last four or five laps and now yeah he tucks into the back of that little group but I don't think he'll stay there for long he's obviously fatigued he's misjudged this one the pack now catching up Pintado Brian Daniel Pintado of Ecuador now, if this was a track race, you'd actually say that this would look almost like a planned tactic from Rodriguez to help somebody. Yeah. It, because you, you, can't, you can't slow down, go so slowly, get lapped in a track race, and then pick up the pace and act as a pacemaker laterally in the race. That is illegal in track racing. Now, I'm not saying that's yeah. what uh, Rodriguez is doing here, but it uh, has very yeah. certain aspects to it, very similar to that. Doctor is going into the penalty zone. So he is uh, in a little bit of trouble. 
By the way, they're on schedule at the moment for something around 2 hours 21, 2 hours 22. There's Doctor put his hands in his head. Disaster for him. He's worked so hard. He was up in the leading six or eight, three and a half minutes, sitting here now, standing here now, and that is his race done. He Look, he knows it. It's as good as being disqualified almost. It's incredibly harsh, I think, from a an objective point of view, somebody who is not embedded in the world of race walking, I think it's extraordinarily harsh. Three and a half minutes. The speed they're moving up at the front, 402, 405 per lap. It's about 90% of an entire lap. He's just got to stand here now. Unbelievably frustrating. Now, is that her beginning to struggle? Left a picture. The uh, Chinese athlete who's had a fabulous day just beginning to struggle. Now, 2.03.24 through 30k, Tim, that gets them around about 2.23 finish time, which would be a massive world lead. Uh, 2.26.40 currently held by Kawano. And we need to keep a close eye on our list of national records. So, Italy, the current national record for Italy, 2.26.16. Stano is going to obliterate that. It is the Italian you can see in this uh, lovely shot from above. Stano who leads from Kawano, and then uh, Karl Storm in third in the yellow, and about a four meter gap back to Brian Daniel Pintado of Ecuador. And is he having to let go now? The 26 year old who has raced in six 20K races this year, was fabulous in Muscat, took fourth place in Oman, maybe finding this distance just a little bit too tough on this occasion especially with the uh, tempo cranking up all the time they've gone through 31k 32k beckons they'll be coming through the line in front of us very soon and then uh, with three kilometers to go less than two english miles we may well be down to three there they are stano kawano karlstrom So Pintado just slightly adrift of that lead group. And as they go through 32K in around 2.11.30. Let's, we'll bring you the official split in just a moment. Well, Karlstrom gets his nose in front. Now as they head out on this uh, 33rd kilometre, waiting for that uh, split to come up and there it is 2.11.31 for the leading uh, trio Stano Massimo Stano of Italy knows how to get it right on the big occasions Patrizio Parcheschepe his uh, coach will be roaring him on this is the man who trains at uh, Castel Porziano just outside Rome. I actually googled it last night and it looks like a royal palace with the grounds of hundreds of acres. But I'm familiar with that area and uh, Stano enjoys those uh, glorious sandy forest trails, pine forest trails along the Italian coast. It's a fascinating area. It's uh, just outside the town of Ostia on the seaside about half an hour from Rome and there's uh, ancient Ostia it's almost like a, a mini Pompeii it's a massive ruined Roman city that I'd never heard of until I visited it about 30 years ago but it's extraordinary Stano leading in what is a historically famous walk from him having already become a living legend in Italy where they love their race walking from Kawano and Karlstrom, their second and third, locked together. Pintado, a couple of seconds down. There's the view from Pintado. He's having to let them go, and the Ecuadorian in fourth place. He doesn't want to finish in that. The horrific fourth place. What do they call it? The chocolate medal in Spain. Yeah. Fourth place. <laughs> yeah, Spain got fourth place in every race walk at the Olympics last year. The reference being, I guess, about as much use as a chocolate fire guard. <laughs> Who wants a fourth place medal? Interestingly, Stano says his idol is Jefferson Perez, uh, the Ecuadorian. 
multiple global medalist. So place your bets, folks. Just over two laps uh, to come. Stano of Italy, Kawano of Japan, and Karlström of uh, Sweden. So those of you watching at home, if you're keen runners, these athletes are going at about six and a half minute miling uh, for 20 miles. That's how fast they're going. There's Hurt. He's back in fifth place, the Chinese. He has lost a lot of ground in the last 10 minutes or so. He's 28 seconds down on the leading group. Their uh, last kilometre, by the way, was a 4.04. So very consistently now, 4.04 and okay. 4.03 territory. Uh, we're, we're hearing we've got, got another disqualification, Agusti, uh, the Italian. Yep, we saw him go into the penalty zone a moment ago. He's now on f his fourth red card for Bentney. So sadly, he will be disqualified. Interesting, a lot more disqualifications in this race compared to the 20 can. A lot more for Bentney as well. And meanwhile, up at the front, still a very clean slate. Only her on one card and Nodder, both for a lot of contact. But significantly, none of the leading trio have broken away. And Karlstrom now in trouble. A gap there between Stano and Kawano. Back to Karlstrom as they go through 33k. The gap's about eight meters. And what a pairing this is. A quality. Stano, the Olympic champion from last year. Kawano, the world number one on paper coming into this competition battling it out and they look to have done the damage, sufficient damage to have dropped Perseus Karlstrom. He already has a medal from the 20k Karlstrom. Took third place in that race uh, 10 days ago behind a brace of Japanese. But Masatora Kawano, the 23 year old, won their national trials, their national championships in Wajima back in April was sixth in the Tokyo 50k last year, the Olympic 50k. Of course, it was in Sapporo, a few hundred kilometers north, to try and get slightly cooler temperatures. But he's got enormous strength. He was fourth in Muscat, suffered that frustration, Kawano, back in uh, March in uh, Oman. Fabulously organized championships there, just outside the medals, over 35k. And here he is, hanging onto the coattails of Massimo Stano of Italy, who is attacking here. It's almost like he's got the Japanese up against the ropes and he's pummeling into Kawano, trying to break him. And the Japanese is hanging on desperately. Karlstrom back in third place. He's had to let them go. He's only two or three seconds back, but the gap is growing. Certainly is. I wouldn't write off Karlstrom just yet because he clawed his way back from fourth to get a fabulous bronze a week ago, defeating Kenya's Gathimba. And these two athletes will hear the bell the next time they go through the Finnish gantry, so it's Stano and Koano, the Olympic champion. Koano, silver back in nine, 2019 World University Games, but he's never won a global championship medal at senior level. So well, the last uh, split for these two, four minutes exactly. It's the quickest split of the, ra split of the race for them. And it's Stano who's doing the damage. He's testing... The Japanese Kawano now, and is that a gap? Karlstrom was a couple of seconds slower in that uh, last kilometer, the 33rd kilometer. And Stano is continuing to uh, keep the pressure on, try and break the Japanese. And of course, Kawano will be getting massive support from the sidelines. He knows he'd love to emulate the gold medal walk of his compatriot in the... Uh, 20 kilometer race a few days ago. Remember Toshikazu Yamanishi, 1.19.07, to win by seven seconds from his teammate Ikeda. They took gold and silver in the 20K. Can Kawano make it double gold? Stano, ooh, and that looked like a yellow card for Kawano. Look at the grimace, gritting his teeth The Japanese. He's in agony here trying to hang on to Stano, and Mara Stano looks as cool as a cucumber. Yeah, certainly does, looks very relaxed, really putting the hammer down now. Kawana, just after that yellow paddle, just needs to make sure he doesn't accumulate any red cards. So, who can keep their technique? <laughs> and 
clear the gap in these final stages. So it's Stano and Kawano. Meanwhile, Karlstrom looks like he's around 10 to 15 seconds back. The leaders will be coming through the Finnish gantry for the final time. They will hear the bell any moment. It is the bell this time then. And Stano comes through the Olympic champion at 20 kilometers with a lap to go. Kawano of Japan, the fastest man in the world coming into this race in second place. But is he at last breaking? Has the Italian found the key to unlock the stout resistance of the Japanese? And Kawano there getting another warning card, a warning disc, not a red card, but he is being observed as being right on the red line. Karlstrom in third place, now 13 seconds back. The Swede, who took a bronze in the 20k, has had to ease back on the throttle, maybe consolidate a place for a second medal at these championships. As he heads out on this final lap now, one more turn for him and this leading pair. And the Italian Massimo Stano of Italy, it would be of Italy, wouldn't it, if he's Italian, but the Italian Massimo Stano, who is, uh, well, he's been a serial winner. The Olympic champion, one in Jujinshik, back in April, and Mara, that gap is growing. And it was a 3.53 split for Stano, and Karlstrom was some 13 seconds behind Stano, but he's safely ahead of Pintado in fourth, so it looks like the medals are sewn up, but what will the order be? Well, he hasn't got a big gap yet. Kawano of Japan, if anything, has closed a little bit in the last couple of minutes. The gap is about five meters. They are a long way clear of fourth place. Pintado has walked wonderfully. He really has the Ecuadorian. But maybe after fourth in Muscat, he is heading for fourth again here. That would be cruel for the Ecuadorian athlete, Brian Daniel Pintado. Astano keeps pumping with those arms. Here is Pintado, well into his final circuit. 3.53 is by far the quickest circuit of the race. And in fact, the news is Pintado has overtaken Karlstrom. The Swede has dropped back to fourth place. Those are the splits on your screen at 35K. But that was a couple of minutes ago. And here is Perseus Karlstrom of Sweden. He's had to let go and Karlstrom may himself be the man who finishes in fourth place. He was third in the 20k here. Back to the leader, Stano, though. And the gap remaining at about eight metres. And Mara, I just cannot see him being caught now. Yeah, he's just got to keep working. He's got about half a lap to go. What's that about? Much less than that. He's in the home straight. They've made the final turn. But that is a 10 metre gap now. And Stano. Massimo Stano of Italy is going to become world champion. He will add that gold to his gold from Sapporo last year. The Olympic gold over 20 kilometers will become world championship gold here in Eugene, Oregon. The final road race of these championships has been a dramatic classic. And Stano accelerates yet further as the line approaches. Masatora Kawano has put up fabulous resistance, but had eventually to succumb to the constant pummeling, the attack, lap after lap, and through the last few hundred meters, the acceleration of Massimo Stano has been irresistible. You can see Kawano there trying to come back in him, but he's going to run out of road. It is gold for Italy. Massimo Stano is world champion. Masatora Kawano crashes to the track, utterly drained, utterly exhausted. The most fabulous battle over the final few hundred meters I've seen in many years. And there is uh, Perseus Kaltrum. He is, in fact, in third place. I thought for a moment he had been caught, but Karlstrom bronze in the 20k for Sweden and bronze in the 35k for Sweden. The Viking hat is out. Karlstrom hung on. I thought Pintado had caught him, the Ecuadorian, in the last few hundred metres, but that wasn't the case.
Oh boy, what a bit of adrenaline can do for a tired man. What fatigue. He has the medal around his neck already. <laughs> Just fantastic. Confirmation of the results then. Massimo Stano of Italy running a uh, walking tour. World best time, 2.23.14. Kawano, 2.23.15. Could hardly have been tighter at the line. Karlstrom, 2.23.44. There were 11 national records in the first 15 finishers. Fantastic quality in depth today here on the streets of Eugene. Chocho are closing out the top 24. He is a coach and great performer. His time, 2.23. But we have been treated to a quite majestic morning of racing here in Eugene, Oregon.